Hi everyone, my name is Victoria Spain and you are now watching Spain's Travels. Today I'm going to talk about the Ural Pass and the Ural Pass is a multiple destination flexible train pass for people wanting to travel in Europe. You can either get a one country pass or you can get a global pass. A one country pass will allow you to travel multiple places within one country, which is what I did when I had my URL pass in Italy. Or you can get a multiple country pass, or it's called a global pass, which will allow you to travel within the country and from country to country. So it's a very customizable um, ticket that allows you to travel where you want to travel within Europe. So how does it work? When you go into the Euro website, to start your process of selecting your URL ticket. You want to make sure, as I said earlier, whether you are traveling just within one country or you would like to travel from country to country. Once you select either a global pass or an individual country pass, then you will be allowed to select um, a certain amount of days within a month. So how URL works is you get to select three, four, five, six, or eight days within a month to travel. And this does not mean that you have to travel like specifically eight days in a row or specifically three days in a row. What it means is that you get three, four, five, six, or eight individual days of train traveling time that you can use as many trips as you want within each day. And within a one month period, you get to choose how many, how many days that you want to travel within that one month period. So for example, when I traveled to Italy in 2018, I purchased a URL pass and I purchased a three day URL pass. I spent nine days in Italy. However, I purchased a three day URL pass and I used my URL pass to support my major trips on high speed trains when I was going from city to city. For example, I went to Venice, I went to Naples, I went to Pompeii, I um, was able to go to a lot of different places, oh, including Rome, um, while I was in Italy. And I was able to do that with my URL pass, paying one fee up front and being able to um, use my dates wisely depending on how the flow of my trip went so that I can cover my longer distances with the pass. Some important things to know about the URL pass, you do have to purchase it before you go to the destination. So it is something that you have to purchase and you have to have the physical pass before you get to the country in which you want to travel in. And that's really important because you also have to get it validated to take your first trip. When I got my Euro Pass validated, I did it at a train station. And I think I did it at a train station. Oh, I did it at a train station in Venice. Duh. Okay. Um, so when I got my Euro Pass, I validated my pass at a train station in Venice. Even though I started my trip in Milan, I. Did, I found a train ticket from Milan to Venice for about like 12 or 13 euro. And so I just paid for that pass outside of my euro pass. Um, and I bought my euro pass after that. So all of my trips after Venice were covered by my euro pass. So as I mentioned briefly, one of the advantages of having the euro pass is it makes taking high speed trains affordable per se. So you're somehow receiving a discount cumulatively under the one price of the URL ticket to take all of these high speed trains. However, there is one thing to note when you do want to take a high speed train, you have to make a reservation. Um, and depending on what country you are in and which rail line URL works with, you might be able to make the reservation directly on the website or you will have to make it through URL. And the other important thing to know about making a reservation are reservations do cost for high speed trains. It's not an exorbitant amount of money, but it does cost. And so when you do make a reservation for a high speed train, you will get a, a separate train ticket 
that will count as your ticket. And when you present it on the train, you'll have to present your URL pass and your train ticket together. So I'm gonna show you what my URL pass looks like and then I'm gonna show you what a reservation looks like. So when you get a URL pass, it'll come in a little envelope like this. Um, and in the back, it will have its return because Technically, when you're done with the URL pass, they like you to send it back to share your journey, and I think you can get something out of it if you send it back, but I kept mine as a souvenir, and I assume that I will do URL again in the future. Um, but this is what the front of it looks like. And then, when you open it up, inside will be your train ticket. And if you can see right here, this is where I got my train ticket validated at the train station. And then there are two other panels that drop down. These panels here, if you see closely, you can see where I wrote in my actual train destinations. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. So yeah, so that's what the URL pass pretty much looks like. And you can fill out your personal information behind here if you decide to send your URL pass back. In terms of in terms of a reservation, this is what you'll print this out at home or or save it to your phone. But this is what a reservation will look like, most standardly, and it'll have like the barcode for the train, um, the people who check your train tickets to scan, and it'll have your um, origin and destination. And if you can see right over here. This was the price of the reservation for this ticket, 10 euro. Now, the value of the actual ticket was more like 80 euro. So you can see the savings I get by using the URL pass. So I'm getting a reservation on the train for 10 euro. My URL pass cost me 120 euro altogether. So I saved just within this one trip alone, I was able to save pretty much most of my URL pass worth for the one train ticket and I went to multiple destinations. Some other things to note, if you have a family or you want to travel with a family with URL pass while you're in Europe, um, they do have a family friendly system. So the adults do have to have their own tickets and young adults or youth passes um, qualify for people between the ages of 12 and 27 years old. So you get a discount for being under 27 or your child, you know, who's between 12 and 27 are getting a discount to pass. However, the really cool thing is if you have a child between the ages of four years old and 11 years old, those children do need to have a child pass. However, a child pass is free. And this is qualifiable for up to two children per adult. So if you have two adults, four children between the ages of four and 11 can travel with you for free, but they do need a pass. If you have a child that is under the age of four, they can travel free without a pass. However, they might be expected to sit on your lap, especially on high speed trains with reservations. A lot of the times the reserved area can be full and someone will be sitting next to you. So most likely your child four and under will have to sit on your lap on the train. Um, so it can be pretty affordable to travel with children with URL. So now that I have given you a little bit of fundamental information about the URL pass, I want to talk about how you decide whether URL is right for your trip or not. As you noticed, I did say that I used URL when I went to Italy. However, this past summer, I took a vacation in Spain and we chose not to use URL for several reasons. So I just wanna go over some of the things that you should go through when deciding whether you want to use a URL pass to get around or whether you can just go with making reservations of trains and planes by yourself. Because URL can be very affordable in certain instances. In other instances, it can kind of be going out of the way and not very convenient. So here's some reasons um, 
that should allow you to choose whether Euro is right or not right for your trip. The first thing to consider is, is URL even available for your destination? URL is spelled E-U-R-A-I-L, which indicates that URL is a service for Europe. So some destinations, even within Europe, do not offer compatibility with URL pass. So you want to make sure that your destination is even available. Otherwise, what's the point? The second thing is how much will you be realistically traveling once you get there? Let's just say you are traveling to Italy and your only plans are to spend half of your time in Rome and the other half of your time in Venice. If you find that you can get a train ticket or even a plane ticket or a bus ticket that can get you to and from um, Rome to Venice for a cheaper than a three-day URL pass, then maybe the URL pass is not for your trip. However, it is important to know that the URL pass is not just for high-speed trains, but it also can cover regional trains, it can cover some um, subway type systems, and so when I say subway type systems, there are some systems that run in European countries that are similar to the subway and they run underground, however they are more like trains, so that's something to look up as well. So just make sure that um, you know that the URL path can get you within an area very conveniently with your pass too. Another thing to consider is, are you a bargain hunter like I dearly am, <laughs> and most of this channel is about. Um, are you a bargain hunter and can you plan early enough to find really inexpensive train tickets for your trip? And I think you can for some destinations. From, for others, it really depends on the season that you are traveling. Sometimes you can really get all the train tickets that you need for the trip without having to buy a, a one big pass. So maybe you can get as many train tickets as you need for under $120, and then that will be better for your trip. So consider that. And going along with that, do you plan to stick to a strict schedule? Because planning all of your train passes beforehand could mean that once you get to your destination, you don't have the flexibility of time that you might feel that you want later on. So a URL pass can be in your advantage if you want that flexibility as opposed to once you bargain hunt and you get all of your train passes down, you can't move the times. The times may not be refundable or it may have a cost to be changeable or exchangeable. So also keep that in mind. That can be a plus in your advantage of wanting to consider something like a URL pass because how the URL pass works is you can travel as many trips as you want within that one day, which means if you wrote down a trip on your Euro pass and you plan to leave at 11, maybe you couldn't actually leave into like 22, so you might have to move that and you have as many as you can within that one day. So just think about that when considering what would be better, bargain hunting for train tickets or trying to decide on something a little bit more flexible. The Euro pass offers the maximum amount of flexibility when your choice is to travel via train. And the last thing that I would ask you to think about is something that was a deal breaker for me when I decided not to use URL for Spain. Um, so for example, in Italy, I decided to use URL and I found out that URL uses multiple different train lines, including Trenitalia, which this reservation here you see is from Trenitalia. I was trying to get, oh, there it is, Trenitalia. And Trinitalia is a train line, one of the trains that um, goes through a lot of the major, it goes through a lot of the major train stations in a lot of the major cities in Italy. And it's a high speed train line as well. So the nice thing about Trinitalia is you can make URL reservations on their website, which is a whole lot easier than doing it on URL's website because the alternative to not being able to make a reservation on the train station's website is going through the reservation portal on URL's website, which is a lot more 
shall I say, archaic <laughs> in a way. It's not intuitive. It doesn't make you feel like you're buying a train, train pass. It makes you feel like you're requesting something and you have to wait to see if they're going to give you that. When in turn, if you can do it on a website like Trenitalia, it's like you're purchasing the reservation and you're gonna have to purchase the reservation on URL's website as well. And another thing that I found is the reservations are slightly cheaper when you purchase them on the train's website than it is when you purchase it on URL's website. So that is a big thing to consider when it comes to being able to make train reservations for URL. And that was my deal breaker because in Spain, they have major train lines and um, they don't offer that service for the major um, high-speed train line in Spain. So, kind of sucks. But, consider that. So, if you are now considering purchasing a Euro Pass, please go visit the Euro website and see what they offer and see if it's cool for your trip. Especially if you're planning to travel to Europe, I definitely recommend it. Um, just so you know, this is not a sponsored video. I just want to talk about my experiences using the URL Pass and give you guys an alternative and expensive option when you're trying to decide how to get around in the destination you're going to. Because the last thing you want to do is stress about planes, trains, and automobiles. You just want to have fun and enjoy your trip. So please check out the URL website. Also check out other videos on my channel. I do want to do some other videos about transportation abroad. For the first time ever, I was able to rent a car in a foreign destination over the Christmas season. Um, I went to Costa Rica, so I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about that and maybe bring in someone else who has had more experience driving um, internationally. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I'm really happy to bring you guys more diverse content. I want to do a series about trains, planes, and automobiles, and I dropped that a little bit in the video. I just want to talk about transportation abroad. So like this video if you're interested in hearing more about traveling abroad and how to save money once you're abroad and you don't want to spend all your money on taxis or whatever is most expensive. Also comment below if you have questions about anything that I'm talking about and you want to further the conversation about traveling abroad, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel and also keep enjoying my content. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.